This is Tembeli Shetunjana and you are listening to the K Jazz Show with Ungwako on Kofifi FM 97.2. Please help me welcome to the K Jazz Show. He is the composer, he's a vocalist, he's a band leader, he's a bassist, and his name is Zuidi Ndwandwe of Kuchenga. Good afternoon, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, my brother. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be on here. Uh, afternoon to your listeners as well. And yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Firstly, you know, congratulations on a stellar debut performance in Johannesburg. Let's go back, you know, to last week, Saturday, and uh, talk about that performance. What stood out for you? Um, I think it was the fact that, personally, we had friends and family there in the in the audience. But I guess what stood out was, apart from the friends and family, we had complete strangers who have, you know, no reason to support us in any real way, telling us that they were, that we were the highlights of their afternoon yeah. uh, of the entire you know music experience that they came out to specifically to to hear us you know knowing that there were so many brilliant other artists on the lineup and i think it was really really touching that um we've built a connection with people purely from the strength of the music you know no affiliation they have no reason to like i say yeah support us yeah. As friends and family would, not that they do it just because, you know, they're friends and family, but because we do our thing. But it, I think it's that thing of like, you know, if you if 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 you can get someone who doesn't know you from a bar so to tell you that they're there just to listen to you, yeah, then I guess you're on the right track. And I guess that was the the highlight to to receive that outpouring of love and support. Yeah. Um it really keeps us grounded and it 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 keeps us focused on, you know. The bigger picture of what we're trying to do with this music thing yeah, um, yeah so yeah i was really i was really i was really encouraged by by the love yeah yeah look it was loud and we saw it and i i want us to reflect and i want us to go back you know take you back for a little bit and tell us about how the band you know the collective kujenga came about where does the story begin you know for the band sure um so myself and my twin brother boy to and our friend, Thane Smith, we're from a community in Cape Town called Tableview. And um, we met through a church that we were all playing at. Well, me, Oetu, met Thane at a church that we were playing at. And um, we realized that he's interested in the same music that we are interested in. He's a young musician. He's also looking to play. And we were just like, do you want to you know, join us for, you know, like these restaurant, random restaurant gigs that we were playing in our local community. You know, playing other people's music at the time. But we're like, you know, we can can really work well together because we give off similar vibes he told us he had a, a drummer in his high school at the time that that could fit well with the sound of the band his name yeah. is riley van der Mava. yeah and yeah we became the four-piece band known as kujenga in 2017 and our start is really playing at restaurants like i said offering to do background music you know for patrons and you know playing playing music that's palatable palatable enough for people to be like oh these these young boys can play but I think what was really the the step further was when Over to decided to let us know that he's actually got songs that he's written, yeah. like original music. And we've never been at that point in our musical training before where someone says, yeah, let's do our own songs. Yeah, I, I think it was about a year in when he did that as well, maybe just six months or so. And it was really like a shifting point because, you know, it wasn't just like he had one or two. We had like an entire album's worth of music. And that was like the battery in our backs to like really to push, you know, to try put shows together, mm. you know, not just to play at restaurants where we're relegated to background music, but to put on our own shows so people will come and listen to our own music. Yeah. And yeah, that was around 2018. And uh, we recorded an album featuring the music that was predominantly written by my brother, Owetu. And um, that was in the beginning, start, uh, the start of 2019. And that album is called, is called Nationality. Mm. And the music that you hear there is basically music from the formative years of our songwriting stage. And it represents, you know, um, our influences at the time, um, the idea of what we were trying to do musically. It's a time capsule for for what four young musicians from Tableview, which has no music culture, really, mm -hmm. um, as much as other locations within Cape Town do, what four young musicians from Tableview were trying to do with, you know, Black improvised music. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I actually wanted to talk to you about some of the titles of the songs that we'll be playing today. One hymn for sure. Honey. You know, I mean, how did you guys get to the title? What's what's the backstory there? Um, so yeah, it's, it's really it's quite something. I went to go watch a production at uh, one of the UCT's student campuses, particularly for the theater students. A friend of mine put on a production as part of like their final year assignment. And um, they invited me to come watch it. The production was based on the civil unrest in South Africa towards the beginning of the first democratic elections. You know, the early years in the 90s, those really dark periods of time. You know, there's a lot of violence and instability. And the production opens up with the murder scene of Chris Honey, you know, in his home. And it struck me right there and then that I don't know if Honey has ever been memorialized within mm. Black improvised music, also mm. known as jazz music. I I tried to think, you know, has anyone ever actually paid tribute to him within, you know, that musical um, language? Yeah, yeah. And I was I was moved right there and then watching that opening scene to to pen something for him because you know the trajectory of South Africa was vastly different because of his assassination so that's what inspired me to compose a tune in dedication of him and I I couldn't think of anything better than him for honey yeah that I mean that I I can't remember what you know within jazz music we have a lot of hymns you know for particular people places so I was just like let's write a hymn for honey yeah and uh, that's the story Coffee FM, we're spending time with Vidan Rando. He's one seventh of Kuchenga. They're an Afro jazz band, and he's joining us this Sunday to talk about, you know, the band itself. And he's introducing himself, of course, to us as an audience of the K Jazz Show, and also talking about, you know, the inspiration behind the band and how they came to came to be. And of course, reflecting on uh, the performance that we witnessed, we witnessed, you know, those of us that were there, including some moments on social media. If you're part of, you know, things there, you have, uh, you probably have uh, come across some of uh, the videos that we've shared there of that performance. Now. It is Jazz Appreciation Month, Zude, and the various conversations around jazz are about unity, education, social cohesion, so on and so forth. Let's talk about, you know, Ujanga's narrative and message. You know, what are you trying to tell us through your music? That's a really good question, actually. <laughs> We're not um, so so deliberate about a particular kind of message with our music. Um, we just know that our music sheds light on things that we experience as Black people, you know, as people living under a, you know, racial capitalist society, you know, as oppressed people, but it also sheds light to our experience as being more than oppressed people, you know. And the the grounding message, maybe unconsciously, would be to understand that, or to get people to understand that we're more than just beings who are here to live. You know, our lives mean so much more than, than what the larger structural impositions would want us to believe, you know? And that art has been so liberating for us. So it has to be liberating for you because we are young. We are yeah. one, you know? Yeah. I think we've never really decided to put out a manifest manifesto as a band. Yeah. We just know that as musicians, we have callings, right? Mm. You know, because this this is this is a, a spiritual affair that we're dealing with when it comes to music and um and with those callings is the ability and possibility for healing
What is your definition of jazz? Some say it's Turner. Others prefer Mkhubata. Then there is Marabi with Miriam and the Skylarks. Or even a Pan-African excursion with Fela. Whatever you decide, let's explore every Sunday from 10 until 1 with myself, Marco T. Malagalak. The K-Jazz Show on Coffee FM 97.2, where it all began. Get in touch on the K Jazz Show on Kofifi FM 97.2. That's the Facebook page. At the K Jazz Show on Twitter and at the K Jazz Show on Instagram. This is Offense Moses Sabula, saxophonist, composer, performer, and arranger. And you're listening to the K Jazz Show with Mwakuti Malakalaka. Sundays 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on your favorite urban radio station. 97.2, Kofifi FM. Where it all began. You know, you, I, I listen to you speak and and I'm just thinking about, you know, the conversation that we had before you and I got together today where you are in studio, you know, wrapping up and, or working and wrapping up your sophomore mm-hmm. effort. Talk, up, mm-hmm. talk to us about, you know, this upcoming album and how different is it from the debut nationality? Sure. So I think you'll be the first you know, platform mm-hmm. to to know this, uh, to be told this, the title of the, the working title of the sophomore project is called In the Wake yeah. because um, it was written in the wake of the two most difficult years of our lives as individuals and as a collective, you know, those really difficult times of the COVID-19 zeitgeist, you know, where no one even knew if we would even make it out of our homes, let alone make it out alive. Um, so it was written in the wake of that period of grief, uncertainty, yeah. isolation, you know, spiritual awakening. It's written in the wake of that time. And so the one stark difference between this album and the previous project is that the majority of the album was composed by myself. And um, in the previous album was composed by, by my twin brother. Yeah. And none of that is, is really intentional or deliberate. Um, Owe to find himself in a period where he had songs and he brought it to the band. And I guess I found myself in this period where I had songs. I was blessed by the musical gods, you know, yeah. compositional ideas that I can share with the band. And um, yeah, that's that's there's that difference. And I guess with that comes its sonic differences because we're not, you know, the same writers, you know. Correct. And um, so there's there's that sonic difference. Um, you know, each each one of us have our own idiosyncrasies, you know, and signatures that we put into the music that we write. Um, the bigger difference, I guess, the more notable difference is the addition of the horns, the brass, um, which which wasn't present in the first album. And that's because we included them in the band in 2021. Yeah. And they've been a part of all our live shows since then, or majority of our live shows. They are members of the band, you know, they 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 aren't just like an extended family. They are part of the nuclear family, I guess, yeah. of Kujenga. Uh, because now no one can divorce Kujenga's current sound from this, you know, horn section. So that's that's the difference. It's it's it, it's made the music more expansive in that way. It's a larger, larger sound, you know, yeah. sonically, you know, more more fuller, more textures. And uh, yeah, I guess I guess those who've heard the first album will be will be wondering why uh, or how this is the same band. Yeah, I want you to talk to us about who the band members are. You know, uh, introduce you sure. know, the band members, the nucleus, the the, the bigger. You know, Kujenga. Who <laughs> are the band members, and what do they do? So the first, uh, so the band member that I introduced initially was my twin brother, Owen Dwandre. He's the pianist. He's also, I guess was the lead vocalist on our first project. Second band member I introduced was Thane Smith and then our electric guitarist, Skumbuza Kamata is on drums. And the horn section consists of Bonga Musula on trumpet, Tamsin Freaks on trombone, and Matthew Wrightford on tenor sax. And these are friends of ours that we've met within the Cape Town music scene. 
yeah. Bonga and Tamsin study at UCT. Uh, one is a master student, one is a final year jazz student. And yeah, this is uh, this is the 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 nuclear of the family. But I always want to say that Kujenga for me feels more like a grassroots movement than it is just a band because we wouldn't be here on our own accord. We had to have our friends who've joined us to make it really feel like a collective. Yeah. You know, from the people who've helped us with our visual artworks, you know, to the people who really put it together for us. And yeah, I really, I really have to emphasize that none of this is possible without those people. Yeah. Uh, they, they for me are like honorary band members in my, in my opinion.
course, we're still hanging out with uh, Zwita here on the KJS show. And we're talking everything Kujenga and the band. And, you know, Zwita, you you mentioned uh, as well earlier that there is a visualizer that's also coming with the release of uh, the next single, which is A Hymn for Honey. Tell us about this visualizer yes. and, 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 and why the need to pair it, juxtapose it, as it were, you know, with the release of the, the, the first single of the new album. So when we put out Him for Honey last year, I was reached out to by this gentleman named Adilson from Johannesburg, who sent me a message on Instagram telling me that he was so touched by the music and he would love to collaborate with us. He does visual arts, he's an illustrator. And it was really a humbling message because I didn't expect it. He had no reason to text me. And um, he told me how much he had been looking for a band with our sound. So when we had a performance scheduled in Johannesburg, I reached out to him to say, we're going to be in your city. Do you want to help us put together a visual accompaniment to um, him for honey? As we were hoping to release it next week, commemorate the 30th anniversary of um, Chris Honey's assassination. And they said they'd be more than glad to. And so we met up in their space in Victoria Yards. Mm. Um Adolson is part of a collective known as Makolida Collective. Um, it's, it's himself and Umzo. And they do some really, really dope art, different kinds of arts as well. It's not once they have a, a wide stylistic approach to their arts, which is what made it really fun. And we basically watched him share his vision for how he will use photography, still images, graphic designing, all these sorts of different textures and uh yeah, we excited to sh- we're so excited to share that next week as part of the the whole release of 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 him for honey. Well, we look forward to it, and of course, Kofi, you heard it here first, the exclusive. They're dropping it next week, and uh, yeah, we'll be we'll be sure to let you know where to find it. Of course, through our social media pages. Now, as we wrap it up, you know, Zwite, when can we expect you know the new project? And are we going to find it on Bandcap? Is it coming out on CD? What's the plan there, man? Um. I guess we can expect it this year. So that's for sure. Yeah. And we will definitely try to put it on Bandcamp because we've seen just how much Bandcamp has helped independent musicians. And that's what we are. Yeah. So it will be on Bandcamp as opposed to physicals. Um, I guess as independent musicians, these are costs that you have to think about if right. Right. you're able to, you know, put this together on your own budget. It will be lovely for us to put it out in physical copies. So that's that's something that the band members and I, I guess, are going to have to discuss and figure out the way forward. You know, yeah. if I if I speak transparently with you. Um, but having said that, the music will be out this year, and hopefully through the sustained support that we've been receiving, we will be able to get it on physical copies. Uh, I don't want to put a due date yeah. on it because, you know, anyone could listen back to this interview and say these guys are liars <laughs> so i uh i would just say that you know as south africans when we say now now the music is coming now now correct correct i feel you i feel you coffee <laughs> fm of course it is the afternoon page three with uh kujenga and uh, we wrap things up here with him his name is Zwide Ndwandwe. and uh, how do we keep up Zwide, with uh the band's activities please share some social media details there sure so we are on twitter and instagram and facebook twitter and instagram has the same social media handle kujenga live essay that's k-u-j-e-n-g-a l-i-v-e-s-a um that's twitter and instagram and then on facebook it's just kujenga obviously people are welcome to follow myself because i mostly post kujenga uh related news um on you can follow me on zuite zuite serve space that's on twitter and instagram as well and then on facebook it's sweet and one but yeah kujenga if you see kujenga on on your social media i don't think there's a lot of bands named kujenga you'll be able to spot who we are and that's where we post all of our information Brother, thank you so much for, for your time. Thank you. So, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and and almost, you know, giving us an insight into who Kujenga is and 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 what projects are, are forthcoming from you and what we can look forward to. So, of course, thank you so much for spending Sunday with us here on the KJS show. Thank you for having me. It's just an honor. Love what you're doing. And I really, really hope that um, we'll be back on air to share some more music with you and more news about our band. But I just want to say thanks for the opportunity to talk to your listeners. Absolutely. Band leader, bassist, composer, and vocalist, Zuden Dwandre, on the KJS show. You're tuned into Kofifi FM 97.2, where it all began.